This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Now that we've seen how to write data to a file, we're ready to learn how to read data from a file, because now we have some data that we can actually read. So let's get started by first pound including the fstream library again, which we need. And then we're also going to pound include the standard library in order to do some error checking later on and some error handling, actually. And we'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So let's get into our main program. The first thing we want to do is create a couple of variables that we're going to use. Grade to store the grade that we read from a file. And then I also want to create a file name variable so that we can prompt the user to enter a file name. In fact, we're going to go ahead and do that now. Enter a file name. We better use get line for that. CN file name. Now at this point we're ready to actually associate a input file object with the file that we're trying to read from. So we do that by using ifstream as the data type. Remember for writing data we used ofstream, which is output file stream. We're reading data this time, so we're using ifstream or input file stream. Then we have a file object name, or a file handle, which we'll call infile. Then we have our parameters. The first parameter is the file name, but we can't use it exactly as is. We have to call a special string function called C underscore string, or str, which converts the string into what's called a C type string, which is an array of chars. We do that because in the fstream library, ifstream is expecting a C type string rather than a C++ string. That's the best I can do for an explanation, so just know you have to use that. Then for the second parameter, we provide a file mode, which is input. Now at this point, before I went any farther in my program, I test to make sure that the file exists. But we know it does, and I'm going to show that to you in a bit, but for now I just want to show you how to get data into the program from the file. And you do that just like you would do it if you were getting it from the console. You provide the file name object, or the file handle, and then that's going to read data from the file and we put it into a variable. Then we can display the variable, and then as a last step, we'll close the file. Of course, all we do is read one data value, but that's okay. So let's build and run the program. We're in our file name, c colon backslash with two backslashes, data backslash is grades.txt, and the first piece of data is 83. And our program stops. And that's right. So that's all you have to do to read data from a file, one piece of data. What we normally want to do, though, is loop through the file to either read part of the file or, more likely, to read the whole file and process all the items in the file. So to do that, we need a loop. So let's write the loop, and then we'll come back and see how to do some error checking on the file. We're going to write a while loop, and then our condition is going to be while there's still data in the file to read. The way we specify that there is no data in the file is by using a file stream function called EOF for end of file. We don't want the loop to run only when we've reached the end of the file. That's not logical. We want the loop to run while we're not at the end of the file. So let me put the closing parenthesis there. But let's go back and we want to put a not operator in front of infile.eof because we want the loop to run while there's data in the file. So we want infile.eof to be false, which it will be if we just make it not for every time that it is false. Every time that it is false, that makes it true. Hmm, that almost confused me. Then after that, inside the loop, we will read a piece of data from infile, just like we did before. We'll write it out to the console, just like we did before. And that's all we have to do. So we close the loop. We've already closed the file, so that piece of work is done. So we're ready to build and run the program. So it's going to prompt us for our name. So we type c colon, double backslash, data, double backslash, grades, dot text and then it reads the file until it's finished.
Let's add one bit of processing to this, just to say that we've done something. And let's figure out the average of the grades. And to do that, we're going to need a total. And then we'll need a average. And we'll assign that 0, 0.0. And this time, we also need some way to count the grades. So we actually need a third integer variable, count. We'll set count equal to 0. We'll set total equal to 0. We'll come into our loop. We'll read a grade. We'll add it to the total. We'll increment the count by 1. Well, we could have done it postfix, but we'll do it prefix. And we will still write out the grade as we were doing before. Now we'll come out of the loop. We'll compute the average is equal to total divided by count. And then we'll see out the average grade is average and L. Alright, let's build and run the program. Enter our file name again. Oh, I didn't put a new line after the last piece of data, but that's okay. There's a complete example of reading data from a file and processing the data in the file. Now, the last thing I want to do is demonstrate how we might check to see if the file exists or not. There's a very simple way to do that. If the file was found and the compiler is able to open it, then it puts a true value in the file name object. So what we want to do is we want to say if not in file. If in file is not true, then we'll do two things. We're going to see out a message, file not found, and then we want to do exit 1. This is a special command, that's what I had the standard library for, that causes the program to immediately exit back to the operating system. You wouldn't use it in most situations because you don't want the program just to completely die. You might prompt the user to enter another name, but for this example, we're just going to have it exit out if it can't find the file. So let me demonstrate to you how that would work. We'll build and run the program. I'll enter a bad name. I'll forget the subfolder and I'll just type grades.txt. And there's my file not found message and then you see it says process returned 1. And that's the standard code for saying that some sort of error occurred and you exited out of the program completely. Normally though, you'll be able to find the files that you're looking for. So let's run it one more time with the correct path and file name. And there's our file data, and there's our average. So to summarize, when we want to read a file, we have to have a file name that's converted to a C type string using the C string function. We use the ifstream data type to create our file object. If we're using error checking, then we're going to check to see if the file did not get opened correctly, and if so, then we're going to flash a message and exit out of the program. If the file does open properly, then we're going to set up a loop that while we're not at the end of file, while not in file.eof, process the data by reading a data item from the file object, that's what we're doing in this line right here, and then whatever other processing you need to do. The last step, as always, is to close the file. Once you've done that, then you're complete and you can feel good about the program. So that's how we read data from a program. Third step, and the subject of our next lesson, is how to append data to an already existing file.